All right, welcome to the long-awaited comparison video of my new Oklahoma Joe smoker and uh, my old uh, Charbroil, uh, I guess you would say Walmart um, brand or Walmart smoker that I've had for a long time. Uh, we're going to do a comparison, The, I guess what I would call the differences between a sort of mid-level um, smoker that you can pick up at like Home Depot versus a smoker that you would buy for a couple hundred bucks at, at really anywhere. And this is not to disparage a, a cheaper smoker. And it's also not to say the Oklahoma Joe smoker is top of the line. It's it's really not. It's it's a good backyard smoker. It's a good commercial like smoker that you can pick up, you know, for a reasonable price. Uh, but you can you can do quite a lot with a with a cheaper smoker apologies for the sleep it's a hot one in illinois today if you guys haven't been watching the weather check local listings uh it's hot but uh it's it's cooler today than it was the last couple of days so today's a day plus i have to do a burn in today because i'm going to be using the smoker tomorrow uh so i will also be showing you how to season your smoker how to do a burn in what they call and uh, some of the the changes that I've made right away to the uh, to the smoker uh, from the out of the box sort of uh, stuff. So I'm gonna also enjoy a cigar. If I'm gonna be out here sweating, I may as well be out here enjoying a cigar. So I'm gonna flip it around, and we will uh, we'll talk about these two smokers and and the differences and. What I think so far, but I haven't used the Oklahoma Joe yet, so so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right, we're out here at the driveway of the Beard Wizard Studios slash uh, Gray Raven Tavern. We have a lot of names for this place, but we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about these two smokers. We're going to do a comparison. You just saw one of my neighbors ride by on a bike. I don't know. He's riding up and down the street. So anyway, we got these two smokers sitting out here. And this one here on the left is a Charb Royal. I think I picked it up for about 200 bucks at Menards or Walmart. I'm not really sure which. Um, and then over here, we've got this Oklahoma Joe. This is the Longhorn Reverse Flow Smoker. And I picked that up at Home Depot. I ordered it because they don't stock it at my location anyway. And that thing cost just shy of 900 So you've got a pretty good difference in price uh, when we talk about this comparison. Again, that is not to disparage the, the charbroil. That thing has lasted and served and cooked some really good barbecue for, I want to say, 10, maybe even 12 years. Uh, it has been a workhorse for our family and, and you can see it's, it's had, it's, it's been through a lot. So we're going to walk around the outside real quick, take a quick look at the difference. First major difference you can see is obviously the smokestack is on, uh, the same side as the firebox. That is because this is a reverse flow. We'll talk about that when we open it up. You can also see the wheels. I'm going to get down there and see if I can show you these wheels see how large steel wheels now i'm not sold on the steel wheels because i'm on pavement those steel wheels would be really nice like on wood or a lawn but i may excuse me i can switch those out and i may be considering switching those out. i may be switching those out for um for rubber wheels and then the first big difference is look at the wheels on this one when you go with a cheaper smoker you're obviously going to get cheaper parts, um, wheels being one of them. Those little, those little plastic wheels, um, those plastic wheels are okay, but they're falling apart. One of the caps has come off. If I rolled around too much, that wheel we're looking at right there on the front will fall off. It fell off today when I was moving the smoker. Um, they can be replaced, but obviously you have to replace them with the same size or you're going to have some lean to your smoker. The other big difference you can see right away is the wheels on this, on the Oklahoma Joe here, are on the same side as the firebox and the handles on the opposite side. 
Um, at first I thought that was kind of strange. As you can see over here, the handle is on the left side of the firebox, wheels over here. Now when you move this charbroil, you're picking up the whole smoker, everything, and pivoting it on those little bitty wheels and you're moving it. So you're getting the full weight of that smoker on that little bitty handle in your arms. And I'll tell you, that thing can be, that can be a pain to move around when you're tired, when you've been smoking all day, when you've been working hard and you need to put that thing back, that thing weighs a lot. Now, the Oklahoma Joe weighs considerably more than the Charbro, but when you pick it up, a good portion of the weight is on the other side of the wheels. So you're not lifting the entire smoker when you pick it up. So that's that's a huge benefit to this design over the Trabro. The other big design difference is the um, wood, I guess you would say wood heater. That flat platform on top of the firebox there is used to heat up your splits, your wood, so that when you put it in, it ignites, it's warm already and it ignites faster. Um, you can also heat them up inside the firebox, um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, whereas the Trabroil does not have that. Now, you could set your splits on top. They probably stay up there, um, but it's not designed conveniently for that, and apologies for the landscaping material and all of this on the side. We're still working on the uh, backyard. Um, also around the outside, you can see a major difference is we'll kind of walk over here is the, um, the, you can see there's a, a soup can for the drain on this side, not provided. And also on the Oklahoma Joe, we've got a bucket also not provided. That was kind of one of the things I was like, I spent enough money on this thing. I don't know why they couldn't provide this a little aluminum galvanized steel, whatever it is, bucket. I had to go buy that. Um, at my local hardware store for it didn't cost hardly anything and I bought liners because I'd rather throw away the liner than try to clean out that bucket so highly recommend the liners I haven't even used them yet and I recommend the liners now you can see there's an exhaust for the smokestack over here I can convert this to a traditional smoker if I want to uh, I'm going to try the reverse flow first and see what I think about it other major differences on the outside is the rack is a little bit larger. It's not too much larger, but it's a little bit larger on the front. And the bottom rack is a lot sturdier. You can see the bottom rack on the uh, Charbroil so it is, is pretty flimsy looking. Um, on the end of the firebox, there's the, the door. You can hardly see it because of the light. But there's a door to open up to let your, your air in and to put wood in there. The firebox on the Oklahoma Joe is a little bit more substantial. And again, light's not very good, so it's hard to see. But it is more substantial for the firebox on this side here. So that's about, and, and you can see the legs. There's a considerable difference in the leg size between the two, um, between the two smokers. On the outside, you also have a thermometer on both. Now, I can tell you right now, there's a couple reasons you don't really want to trust that thermometer. That thermometer is not your cooking temperature because it's up high. It's not going to be the same temperature as your grate level. So you either want to install, you want to install thermometers down here at your grate level, um, or you want to uh, put internal. And I would recommend use a good digital read thermometer setup and i'll put a link to the one i use in the video description below but to have your internal temperature at the great level because i found that these outside thermometers can also be affected by things like sun direct sunlight um, they get water in them especially the cheaper ones that one right there completely ruined within the first few months of using it they got water in it Direct sunlight ruins the temp. It doesn't re it's useless. Don't trust your outside thermometers. They, I mean, they can give you a good gauge of maybe about where temps are, but again, it's the air temp at the top of the smoker, not the temp where your food's at. All right, so now inside these things, sorry. Still getting used to the camera gimbal. So the inside of the firebox here has this charcoal grate 
that's going away, that charcoal box going away. There's also a grate underneath of it that's going away. I'm going to line this thing with fire brick, uh, which is a, a sort of a hack, a trick that I've seen a couple of guys use because this is not an insulated fire box. Um, so to help it retain heat, I'm going to line the bottom with fire brick and put my coals and wood right on top of that. Um, over here in the charbroil, let's open this guy up. Now, I probably did the wrong thing for a lot of years. I used to put my coals and wood right on top of that grate. It made my fire really close to the cook chamber. Probably not the best idea in the world, um, but I was still learning. So if you're going to get one of these, I would recommend take that grates actually for cooking food. If you want to cook food in there, I don't cook food in my smoker like that. I smoke in my smoker. I grill in my grill. Um, so that's if you want to sear stuff or cook things right over the coals, you can do it on those grates. I never found a use for it. I wouldn't do it. Um, I just didn't want all the extra stuff inside my smoker. It's for smoking. So that's the fire boxes. Now we're going to take a look at the interior of the Oklahoma Joe. Now, of course, it's got this extra grate here. This is, that's for putting in the firebox to, again, if I want to cook in there, sear in there, whatever. I'm not doing that. So that's going away. It'll probably get stored in case I need it, but I doubt I'm going to need it. It's just going to get held on to because I'm a pack rat and it gets held on to. So inside you've got your exhaust there. We've got the seal here. I actually bought this separate. This is an aftermarket sort of uh, seal to uh to help keep smoke from leaking out and then under the grates i'm going to take one of these out apologies for the sound under the grates is the baffle that's what makes this a reverse flow smoker so these metal plates here keep the heat underneath of them and bring them out over the top and then out there after it goes across your food it's a little different than a traditional that brings the heat straight in and over and then out the side. So that's what makes this a reverse flow versus traditional. I'm going to leave that grate right there because it's actually going to come out when I season it so it doesn't need to stay in there. Another thing that I added after Mark is you can see those red strips. I used some heat uh, gasket. I forget what it's called, but it's an automotive gasket sealant um, for high temperature. And I use that to seal the firebox and seal where the firebox connects to the cook chamber. I also used it on the back to seal around the um, exhaust just in case there's any heat or smoke leaking out. I want to prevent that. So when we do the burn-in later on that video, I'll show you. We'll, we'll be checking to see if any smoke leaks out or anything comes out of it. And then over here on the charbroil, this is a traditional... And it's a mess. She's, she's served a lot of years. So you literally got your heat comes out. Out here just kind of radiates up and then out that smokestack on the right. Um, it's a smaller smokestack. It doesn't draw as much air. And it's, uh, I'm hoping this reverse flow and the better design, the heavier steel, allows me to regulate temperatures better. Now the other major difference that you're gonna find is you can see this lid is what we, I guess what you would call a clamshell design. It doesn't seal, it just kind of lays over the top of the bottom. You can see right there, it's not, it's not a seal, it just kind of closes over the top of it. I had a lot of smoke that would leak out of this thing as I was cooking, so that means a lot of lost temp, a lot of lost smoke, uh, and it made it harder to regulate the temperature. Also, my, uh, I can get up there to the top. You can see it's got a soup can on top, which I punched holes in because the first thing that broke on this charbroil after the wheel was the, uh, the damper for the exhaust. So I couldn't control the damper and I kind of rigged up uh, my own damper. So little hack for you, if you can fit a soup can over it, that works as a damper if you need to. The same clamshell design goes for the smoke box. So you can see that the smoke box just kind of sits on top of the bottom half and I would lose a lot of smoke there. 
Now that differs here because this lid doesn't close over the whole chamber. Sorry, there was a fly in my hand. It doesn't close over the whole chamber. It just kind of closes over this lip here. So I'm hoping that seals better. I'm hoping that the smoke box seals better and then the seal around the gasket that I put on. Hopefully we don't have any smoke leaks, but if we see any, I'm gonna go buy some more of that red stuff and we'll seal this up even better. We'll see that during the burn-in. So I would say, look, if you wanna buy a smoker, if you want a smoker that's gonna do you a lot of good work for a lot of years and you don't have a lot of money, absolutely. Go spend you a couple hundred bucks at Walmart, especially if you're learning. If you're just getting started learning how to smoke, uh, you know, ribs and brisket and pork shoulder and chicken and turkey, that thing has cooked so many Christmas and Thanksgiving dinners, prime rib, everything. I cook a lot of stuff on that. A couple hundred bucks, absolutely. 10, 12 years of life. And I'm going to give this thing away to somebody here locally. I'm just going to put it on Facebook. And it's probably going to give them a couple, three, four more years of good service. Absolutely get one of those to start with. I was ready to graduate, so I'm hoping that this Oklahoma Joe does me better, works better, works longer, lasts longer. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with one of these. Just depends on your budget, depends on when you're at. If you're just starting, I wouldn't recommend, don't buy one of these when you just start. Don't do it. Don't spend the money because you don't know. Smoking is, it's not easy. It's hard work. That's why a lot of people are buying those digital read electronic hopper filled whatever so they can just say it's just an oven. They park in their driveway and they set it and go. Perfectly fine for them. But doing this, doing an offset smoker, this is work. So I would say don't go spend that kind of money if you're just starting out. But if you've been working on one of these for a long time, we'll see. I like what I see on this one. I like how it looks. I like the design. I'm happy with it so far. There was a little bit of damage from the delivery guys, but so far it built easy. It went together fast. All the parts were there. Everything was designed well. Um, I didn't have any trouble. The only thing I would say is I wished it came with that drip bucket, only because it's like a $7 thing and I spent enough on that. Why couldn't it come with a, with a stupid drip bucket? But anyway, next video we're going to do a burn-in. I'll show you that. I got a little experiment with one of the starter blocks that I bought. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go inside and cool off for a little bit. And then we're going to come back out here and we are going to do ourselves a burn-in. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Make sure you subscribe and uh, tell me what you think. Which one do you have if you have one? Ask me what you want to know about either one of them. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. You have a great one. Much love. Bye.